Let's see if I can throw a couple of other thoughts at my friend Mr. Feinbaum and see if he wants to call me an idiot. It's been a long time since we've done this bit. All right, Paul, I spent a lot of the weekend watching these games. Let's start with this. Call me an idiot, but no contender at the end is going to have a better loss than Notre Dame had on Saturday night against Ohio State. So if it comes down to that, I still think the Irish get in. Those four years in Chicago are getting the better of you, Greeny. You are an idiot for this reason. Think ahead about 13 weeks. There's an Alabama-Georgia SEC championship game. The loser of that is still going to the playoffs, and that, my friend, will have a better that, – that team will have a better loss than what we saw on Saturday night. All right, perhaps. We'll see. Let's see if that game is close as this one was. That's what I liked about this. On the road, true road game opening season. We'll see. All right, next stop. Call me an idiot, but the Pac-12 might just as well go home. After the game that Utah lost the other night, after the way that Oregon lost the other night, and the only good team they have is USC, and we in the Big Ten claim them already. So as far as I'm concerned, it's already over for the Pac-12. What do you think? I would like to call you an idiot, but I think Heather will call you an idiot. I won't because uh, you are correct. Uh, Heather will disagree. I'm certain of that, but it's over. Uh, I know SC is hanging out there, and, and you can argue that Utah has a path. They don't. Say a prayer for the Pac-12. Once again, first weekend of the season, it's over. All right, fair enough. And, and then here's my third one, and I, you've already kind of touched on this. But call me an idiot, but it might as well just put Bama and Georgia in the Final Four right now. And we, we can figure out all the rest of it if you want. But Georgia was supposed to be diminished after all the players that they lost. They beat Oregon 100 to nothing. Are you kidding? Let's put the two of them in the playoff right now. Greeny, do you know how painful it is to, to almost not call you an idiot at all? I found the technicality on your first question, and that's the only reason I was able to do it. No, you're right. Uh, these two are going to be in the playoffs, and uh, even Mike Greenberg can get that right. But look, I mean, they just look unbelievably good. And let me get uh, bring Sacho and Heather in here because I want to talk about this for a minute. I mean, the question is pretty simple. We talked a lot about Ohio State. We talked a lot about a few other teams. But at the end of the day, right this minute, are we right back where we were at the end last year, Heather? Are Alabama and Georgia the two best teams in the country? I'm going to say there's wiggle room for Ohio State. Hold on a minute, because when you look at what Ohio State did in the fourth quarter, C.J. Stroud completed nine of ten passes. Grind it out, run the ball, strong defense. They found a different way to win. Hold on. I need to push back on this. Okay. Oregon is supposed to be a good team. That is, in theory, a neutral site game. I get it. Atlanta is not a neutral site for Georgia, but whatever. And that was never a game. I sat down to watch that, and I had to go find something else to do at the end of the first quarter because it was so completely non-competitive. When Ohio State had a battle on their hands all night long, I test. I know it's early in the season, yep. but boy, Georgia looked better to me. Georgia looked outstanding, but nobody in the country had a better win than Ohio State. They played a top five team. Ducks were ugly. Oregon. Well, again, so I yeah. get maybe some of the rankings aren't what they're supposed yeah. to be. But, you know, Sacho, it was Mr. Feinbaum here who told me Notre Dame was overranked at number five. I, I, Oregon is supposed to be a top 11 team in the country, and Georgia just laid waste to them. I was very impressed. Well, Mr. Feinbaum was very wrong, as we, as we all know. Uh -huh. uh, maybe we can call him an idiot. <laughs> but no. what, what, I, what I will say is this. Uh, Ohio State did all of that without their number one receiver. Jackson Smith and Jigba went down early in the game. He tried to come back, but he was out. So that's number one. And then number two, their defense. Ohio State's defense looked really, really, really good. And so you want to put them in that caliber of top two or three teams. They may be able to stop a team like Alabama, stop a team like Georgia with their excellent defense. Well, let me give you another one here then, Paul. I think that we should – do you have Archie Griffin's phone number? Because if so, give him a call and tell him he's going to have to make room in his club of one. He is the only two-time Heisman <laughs> Trophy winner. Just send the trophy to Bryce Young. He's going to win it again. He looks even better this year, Paul. What do you think? Thank you, Greeny. You're an idiot. Finally, I got to say it with, with full-throated uh, fervor. Uh, I mean, th that you cannot make that statement. A year ago today, we all sat on this stage and we all gave the trophy to Alabama to win the national championship. 
I, I'm, I know I like to overreact and, and over-exaggerate sometimes, but you can't say that on Labor Day because so many things can happen. And, and I still think uh, Bryce Young has competition on his own team from two different players. And don't forget Stroud. He was great in the fourth quarter, and he will be great again. He's a major competitor. What do you think, Heather? Heisman Trophy right now favorite at this moment. Is it Young? Is it Stroud? Is it somebody else? Well, it flipped. It's it's um, Young right the second, and then it's Stroud. But to me personally, it's Will Anderson Jr. You talked about that hit. I mean, kapow, right? I don't want to be the other guy on the side of that. It's to me, he's the one who should, we should be talking about. And the way he can affect the game. You saw Utah State's offensive game plan. They were getting, getting the ball out quick. They're running a lot of zone read. Will Anderson said, "You know what? I don't care. I'm going to line up tighter. I know the play you're going to run. I'm going to destroy this play before it even gets started." So that's the thing that makes him different. It's not just okay, drop back pass and get a sack. No. He affects games even when people try to take him out of games. Well, those three guys are probably the first three picks in the draft, too, right? In some order, C.J. Stroud, Bryce Young, and Will Anderson Jr. are probably the first three picks in the draft. In the meantime, I want everyone to get – just in case you're wondering what it's like to play for Nick Saban, I just want you to see this video, okay? So here's Bryce Young, right? They're having a good night. He's celebrating. He's all excited. Everything is good. Then he sees his coach. Ah, okay. <laughs> what this, is that? This was awesome. I mean, so he just got his second touch out of the game. They're up 17 0. Does his little celly with his homeboy. Nope, no more celebrating. Hey, 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 yeah, sure, coach, I got the angle out. Yeah, yeah, I got it 100%. No more celebrating, coach. I got you. Thank you for watching ESPN on YouTube. For live streaming sports and premium content, subscribe to ESPN. Plus.